All right, Christmas movies. Let's do that, and then we'll go back to Super Chat. Um, so, I always, you know, I always forget movies. I don't remember names. I don't remember the, the, the my lists. I don't have a list of favorite Christmas movies. So what I did was, I, I went online and I searched for 40 best Christmas movies of all time. And 40, I've got, oh, one, one is 63. Where did they get 63 from? 63 best uh, mo uh, Christmas movies of all time. The 63 one is from Rotten Tomato. Right. So, um, and I've got one from, let's say, I've got Rotten Tomato. I've got The Muse, five. That was a weird list. I've got one from The Independent. I figured I'd get a British one just to see if, if there was any American slant to this. Um, I, I tried... Stacker, Stacker was, yeah, Stacker was very strange. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know about Stacker. And then I got one from IMBD from 2018. All right. So you guys, I, I'm curious to know what you think your favorite Christmas movie is. But what I want to do is uh, go over some of these lists. So, so I'm going to go over 63, the 63 movies um, from IMBD. And I'm just going to run down them quickly, give you like a two-word, uh, my interpretation of them. And uh, I will tell you what my favorite of all of these is. But uh, So we're going to start with number 63. We're going to do 63 movies in like really, really fast. Okay. 63 is Miracle on 34th Street, the 1994 version. It's good. It, it's not great. The original was a lot better. Preacher's Wife with Denzel Washington. I love Denzel Washington as an actor. It's cute, overly religious movie, but it's it's not bad. 1996. The Grinch. Um, the Grinch, the Dr. Seuss Grinch, uh, 28, uh, 2018. Yeah, it, yeah, this was good. It's 2018, isn't, there, isn't it older than that? Anyway, The Grinch is good. I, I really think The Grinch is a fun, fun movie. Uh, the animation is good. It was, it, you know, in the... the the uh, the sound is good, really uh, uh, one of my one of my um, one of my favorites. Christmas Chronicles, don't know it. Uh, Christmas Chronicles two, don't know it. Love Actually, that was a fun movie. Hugh Grant, nineteen uh, two thousand three. Um, Liam Neeson, uh, Hugh Grant, Emma Thompson, uh, romantic comedy. Not sure what it why it's Christmassy, but good movie. Uh, I enjoyed it. Anytime I say good, I mean I enjoyed it. I'm not making an aesthetic evaluation. Uh, Krampus, don't know that one. National Lampoon Christmas Vacation, fun. A Very Harold and Kumar Christmas. I don't like anything Harold and Kumar. Mickey's Christmas Carol, sounds bad. The Night Before, haven't seen. Home Alone, Home Alone is number 52 here. Other lists I've seen, it's number two or number three or number four. Home Alone is considered one of the great Christmas classics. I think it's a really fun Christmas movie. It's about the ingenuity of a, of a young boy and his ability to thwart uh, these, uh, these idiots who are trying to rob the house after he was left uh, in the house over Christmas. So yeah, Home Alone is funny, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's enjoyable. It's got some great performances, my, my colleague Hulkin and Joe Pesky. And uh, yeah, that, that makes my top 10 Christmas movies, sure. Frosty the Snowman, don't really know it. The Best Man Holiday, don't know it. Scrooge, Scrooge was fun. Uh, Scrooge with Bill Murray, uh, where he plays a horribly greedy, awful, you know, executive. I, I, let me, can I say something about Scrooge for a minute? I mean, there are a number of movies based on the story of Scrooge. But I think Scrooge is a good guy. I like Scrooge. You know, he, he, it's sad because the problem with Scrooge is he has no pride. The problem with Scrooge is he doesn't take what he does seriously enough. So here's Scrooge uh, building a business, making the best of, 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 of a difficult situation, uh, running a store, making some money, uh, you know, trying to do well. And, but he has no appreciation for that. So he feels, and he's made to feel guilty for all of that. And is therefore, instead of being admired, and uh, for the job creator that he is, instead of his workers appreciating him,
for the fact that he's paying market wages and that they have a job and they have some way to go and, and, and to feed themselves, he is portrayed as a cheap, miserable, pathetic, horrible human being. But why? He's productive. He's passionate about his work. Um, he, he hasn't taken his life seriously enough. He hasn't pursued pride seriously enough. He's, he's, he's bought into this altruism too much. So all the movies based on the Scrooge story have this underlying negative premise about business, underlying negative premise about, about being a go-getter, about being ambitious, about having a career. All of them, Scrooge and all the, all the Christmas movies that have this premise. So I, I dislike the premise. The movie's fun, but the premise is terrible. And uh, remember, Scrooge is the good guy. He makes Christmas possible by creating jobs and by selling stuff to people so they can have gifts to give. The Santa Claus, don't know that one. Tim Allen, don't know that one. Black Christmas, don't know that one. The Ref, don't know that one. Je Noël. Je Noël is a war movie about uh, during World War I. I think it was the first Christmas during World War I where there was a ceasefire and the Germans and the French got together and they kind of celebrated Christmas together. To feel, and then they go back to slaughtering each other the next day. It's a, it's a good anti-war, very insightful movie. Definitely worth watching. Happy Christmas, don't know that one. The Muppet Christmas Carol. The Muppets are always fun. A Christmas Horror Story, don't know that. Let It Snow, don't know that. White Christmas. White Christmas is a classic with Bing Crosby and Danny Kay. That's a fun, uh, benevolent, uh, wonderful movie from 1954, kind of my era of movies. And so uh, certainly one of my favorites. And an apocalypse. Never heard of that. While You Were Sleeping, another one of these Sandra Bullock romantic comedies. Okay, don't remember why it's a Christmas movie, but fine. Bad Santa. Eh, all right. Not, not my thing. The Man Who Invented Christmas. Um, that's another, another spin on Ebenezer Cruz, Scrooge. Not a fan Batman Returns. I have no idea why Batman movie is a Christmas movie. The Bishop's Wife. This is a Cary Grant, Loretta Young, David Niven. Love the actors. Love the benevolence. It's fine. Not a great movie. Happiest Season. Don't know that one. Elf. Elf is fun. Uh, fun. Yeah. You know, not a, not a particularly serious movie. Not a, a great movie, but just, just fun. Christmas in Connecticut. Uh, Bob Stanwyck, anything with Bob Stanwyck is worth watching. Um, again, fun movie, benevolent movie. Christmas Carol, uh, again, Charles Dickens story. This is Ebenezer Scrooge. This is the 1951 version. It's just sad to see businessmen portrayed this way. White Reindeer, don't know that one. Un Conte de Noel, don't know that one. Gremlins, Gremlins, don't know why that's a Christmas movie. Not a fan of Gremlins, Steven Spielberg's. No, it's Joe Dante, not Steven Spielberg, Joe Dante's. Trading Places, I'm a, I, I like Trading Places. It's got real problems. Um, it's got real problems, uh, primarily the ease at which you can take a homeless person and teach them how to, how to do finance. Um, and it's got a very bad attitude, again, towards business and finance more broadly. But it's funny. You got to give it that it's funny. And it shows, you know, that you can be self-made, that you can, you can change your own destiny. Better, better watch out. Didn't see that. Tokyo Godfathers didn't see that. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was fun. I enjoyed that with Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. Quite violent uh, action movie. Uh, Rare Ex A Christmas Tale. Don't know that. A Christmas Story, right? Um, 1983. Yeah. That, that, that's a fun movie. I know a lot of you think that's the best movie, that's the best Christmas movie ever. It's a fun movie to watch, uh, Christmas Story. I, it, to me, it's not one of my tops. Little Women. Little Women has made many of these lists. It usually is in the top five, top 10. Here's number 20. Um, great lineup. Winona Ryder, Susan Sarandon. Um, yeah. It's uh, Louisa Mary Alcott's story. Again, uh, 
Benevolent, good. We'll get to Die Hard. Don't worry, we're getting to Die Hard. Babes in Toyland, don't know that one. Edward Scissorhands, not particularly a favorite of mine. Klaus, I think I've seen Klaus, but I don't remember anything about it. Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. I don't think I've seen that. Remember the night. Remember the night with Barbara Stanwyck again. Again, anything with Barbara Stanwyck is worth seeing. Uh, she is uh, she is amazing. Um, that was in 1940. Remember uh, the night. Uh, romantic comedy uh, with Fred McMurray. It's um, I love these movies. Oh, it's Preston Sturgis. No, it's not Preston Sturgis. He wrote it. He didn't direct it. But anything by Preston Sturgis is going to be funny. It's going to be smart. Uh, and Remember the Night is a good movie. Definitely worth definitely worth uh, any of those movies from the 1940s and 50s with Barbara Stanwyck, written or directed by Preston Sturgis. They were a lot of fun. All right, Rudolph the Red Nose near India, 1964. I don't remember. Arthur Christmas, 2011. Don't remember. Here, at number 12 is Die Hard. Now, I don't know why Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It doesn't have a Christmas theme, but it's set in Christmas because the whole thing is during a Christmas party. I think Die Hard is one of the better action movies, maybe one of the best action movies. It's fun. It's exciting. I think the first time I saw it, it's it's edge of your seat. It's one guy taking on a whole array of terrorists and doing it smartly and cleverly and picking them off and destroying them. And it's it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing um, action movie, if you like, if you like action movie. Um, somebody says the, the Lady Eve. Yeah, the Lady Eve is Preston Sergius. The Lady Eve is way, maybe my favorite Preston Sergius movie. It's fabulous. It's so benevolent, so much fun, so funny and heartwarming. It's really good. It's one of my, I don't know, certainly in my top 50 movies is the Lady Eve. So Die Hard at number 12 here. Uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. I'm not a big fan of Charlie Brown. Tangerine. I haven't seen Tangerine. It made a lot of top five lists. Carol, also from 2015. Both of these movies in 2015. Also made a lot of top five lists. Not on mine. I've never, I haven't seen either one of the, these movies. I guess I need to go and watch these. Uh, Meet Me in St. Louis. Another one of these classics, 1944. Judy Garland, Margaret O'Brien, uh, Mary Astor, benevolent, fun, ha you know, good movie. Um, Little Women for 2019. Ooh, wow. It's, it's rare to see a 2019 movie in a list like this. Okay. The Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm not a big fan of this, but uh, it makes all the lists. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, 1967. I think actually, yeah, this one's good. I don't know how it compares to the 2018 one, but I like the story of the Grinch Stole Christmas. I like the Grinch story. All right, number f that was number five. Number five. Anybody know what number one is? Number one in almost every list out there? Number one. All right, number four. And my number one. Number four, according to IMBD, critics rating, it, no, 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 me, this is Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, this is uh, number four, according to Rotten Tomatoes, with a critic's rating of 100%. My favorite Christmas movie. It has both a Christmas feel to it. It has the benevolence. It has the romance. It has the comedy. It has uh, all of that. Number four and my number one is not going to be It's a Wonderful Life. There's no way my number one movie for anything is It's a Wonderful Life. We're going to talk about It's a Wonderful Life in a minute. But number, number one, in my view, uh, best Christmas movie ever. And I did this last Christmas. So some of you should know what this is. Um, is another Jimmy Stewart movie. Another movie with Jimmy Stewart, but not It's a Wonderful Life. Now, It's a Wonderful Life will actually, I'll talk about that. It will actually be my worst Christmas movie. It's going to be the movie, the Christmas movie I hate the most. No, my favorite is a movie called The Shop Around the Corner. I know many of you don't even know the movie, uh, but I see that Oscar 6793 got it right. Uh, but absolutely, A Shop 
the shop around the corner, the shop around the corner by, in my view, the greatest comedy director in history, and that is Ernst Lubitsch, Ernst Lubitsch. Um, shop around the corner with Jimmy Stewart, Margaret O'Sullivan, Frank Morgan, Joseph Schildkraut. Uh, just fantastic movie, benevolent movie, um, romantic comedy. If you've seen You've Got Mail, I'm sure you've seen You've Got Mail. Anyway, You've Got Mail, this is the original You've Got Mail. It was done in uh, 1940, 1940. The Shop Around the Corner. If you've never seen it, it, it's just a it's just a wonderful, wonderful movie. I think I saw it last time was last Christmas. It's a perfect Christmas movie. It, Jimmy Stewart is young and wonderful. Uh, Margaret O'Sullivan is charming, and it's just a clever premise and a, a movie that's been made over and over and over again over the years. Uh, you've got mail is one version of it, but there are many versions of it. Um, that is my favorite Christmas movie. Number three, according to Rotten Tomatoes, is Holiday Inn. Another wonderful one. Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire. Um, this is 1942 musical. Just fantastic. By the way, all the top four Christmas movies, top four Christmas movies, according to Rotten Tomato, were all made in the 1940s. A great, great, great decade. A great decade. Um... Great decade for movies. Maybe the best decade for movies ever. Number two, Miracle on 31st Street, the 1947 version. Another wonderful movie with Maureen O'Hara again. She's in a lot of these lists because it's the 1940s and she dominated. Um, and finally, by almost all accounts, no, by almost all lists, the number one movie, Christmas movie of all time, and my most hated movie, a, a Christmas movie, is It's a Wonderful Life. Now, why do I don't like, why don't I like It's a Wonderful Life? So, I warn you, this will have spoilers. Why don't I like It's a Wonderful Life? Where does one begin? My primary objection to It's a Wonderful Life is it tries to have its cake and eat it too. It creates a character who is fundamentally altruistic. He is the epitome of altruism. He is the epitome of somebody who does not pursue his values, who does not rashly conceive of what will lead him to be happy and go out and achieve it. Instead, it is about a man who gives up on his values. Wanted to go to Paris. Nope. Wanted to go on, uh, to university. Nope. Married his high school sweetheart, even though eh, he wanted to travel. He wanted to see the world first. Took over the family business. Bank in this case. Even though he never wanted to go into the family business, he wanted to escape the family. Ran a bank in an altruistic way. Didn't foreclose when people couldn't pay their debts. Basically ran the bank into the ground. So a man who is an altruist through and through. Because he has not clearly identified his values and therefore has not pursued them. And yet, in spite of that, and in spite of the consequence of that, and the consequence of that are, let's be clear, that he's ready to commit suicide. He's ready to jump off a bridge. In spite of that, the movie suggests that he's lived an amazing life. And the movie ends with everybody coming together, saving his butt. Everybody loves him. He's wonderful. He's going to live happily ever after. No, he's not. He just tried to commit suicide for a really good reason. Because he has no values and the values he used to have. 
He gave up. He didn't plan his life. He didn't shape his soul. He didn't shape his future. It just happened. And the movie tries to suggest that if you do that, if you live the perfect altruistic life, you will be happy. You will be successful, but in a spiritual sense. No, you won't. You'll be miserable. Now, if the movie had ended with him jumping off the bridge, I would have rated it as a great movie. But he doesn't jump off the bridge and everybody bails him out. And you, 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 you have the pretense of that he's going to live happily ever after. No, there's no way that can happen. He is an empty, soulless, valueless person. His values are secondhand. His values are just the values that the society provided him, that his family enforced on him. His values as a his, as an individual, a zilch, nothing, non-existence. It was made by Frank Capra, who very much had this sense of America, this sense of altruism. Now, He bailed people out. So, yeah, he's very much a Peter Kidding. But a Peter Kidding with a happy ending. And that pisses me off. Completely. So I, I dislike It's a Wonderful Life. If you think about the banker who's the bad guy, well, he's the one who's actually foreclosing and people can't pay their loans. I mean, what else is he supposed to do? But he's made out to be a thief in order to nail him, right? So everything about this movie, I don't like. Other than it's well acted. It's Timmy Stewart. He's a good actor. It's, it's, it's well made. The lighting is beautiful. The, the, scene, you know, the, the, the direction is excellent. Frank Capra is an exceptional director. And it's a, it's a story, but it's a bad story. It's a bad story. George Bailey has no soul. He has no soul because it's not his soul. It's a soul created from fragments of other people. He has no values that are his values. He helps people. Why? Because that's what you're supposed to do. He, George Bailey, when he was young, he wanted to be somebody. He wanted to be something. And everything he wanted, he gave up. Everything he desired, he gave up. What kind of soul do you have when you give up all the things that are valuable to you? That's not how you build a soul. It's not how you create a soul. So this is where I am not a conservative. Conservatives love this movie because they want to have their altruism and their happy ending, and their capitalism. And you can't. This is why you're losing. This is why you have to lose. All right, that's my Christmas movies. <laughs> what we need today what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to hundred. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this, uh, and, and you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, 
the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.